Hello, I welcome you all for Fortified Content. As I already said, the Fortified Content works in a different manner. It will be an interesting journey for you. Actually, I am an ENT faculty teaching you Hellenic lessons. If it was an ENT class, the first class of that series would have been Anatomy of Hero. But here, that's not the case. The first class is about pharyngeal arches and in each and every class I'll give you an conceptual question or interesting fa interesting question so that you will be thinking of that question throughout the class and you will arrive at the perfect answer and a perfect concept at the end of the class and uh, I'll give you MC colored in between and I'll give you a fact alert in between so the question for this today's class is why do you call it as a branchialage that is why do you call a pharyngeal arch as branchialage I'll explain, I'll explain it to you with a story named the five star arches it is a story about five star arches how it has been formed then which developed first hearing or balance you would have easily say that hearing is very important for human beings but that's not the case I'll explain you how and which is important and which developed first so first story time I'll tell you a story of yeah notorious a small fish just wandering all around the ocean and sea while wandering it went near a land that is barren island it went near a barren island This was the island. One day, the Nemo fish went near that island. It started to dream that one day I should reach the land. One day I should wander all around the land. Does the dream of the fish come true? Does such a stupid dream come true? Yes, the dream of the fish came true by means of amphibians. the amphibians was able to travel to the land as well as the sea then the amphibians evolved into mammals then the mammals evolved into human beings yes the dream of the Nemo fish is what we human beings are so it is quite surprising right I'll tell you everything in a scientific manner in an interesting manner why I am saying this because first of all the fins of the fishes turned into limbs of human beings okay now that's not going to be dealt today the thing I'm going to tell you is the pharyngeal arches The pharyngeal arch is actually derived from mesenchyme. So the pharyngeal arch will divide within itself to form ectodermal cleft. Then endodermal outpouching okay so pharyngeal arch it also has ectodermal derivatives and endodermal derivatives so why I'm explaining this because the pharyngeal arch is otherwise named as branchial arch because because it the pharyngeal arches leads to the development of gills in fishes I'll tell you how 
the forge number one is mandibular arch in all living species the arch number two is hyoid arch in all living species from third arch onwards from third arch onwards so on because fishes doesn't have only six pharyngeal arches it has up to nine pharyngeal arches so all the arches branchial arches otherwise called pharyngeal arches from three and so on will form respiratory apparatus that is gills in fishes to commemorate that the pharyngeal arches were actually the precursor form in fishes we are naming it as bronchial arches fine so that's why if you understand how the name bronchial arches derive we can understand how a pharyngeal arches will play games between them why i'm telling games because the mandible arch is meant for forming mandible alone the fishes mandible alone will be formed from mandible arches but that's not the case in humans the nemo fish which dreamt of wandering through the land also dreamt of forming new sense organs that's how a sense organ of hearing formed yes fishes doesn't have sense organ for hearing it does it only have lead draining system which is meant for a sensor function inside the uh, inside the sea so the balance was the first developed feature in our precursor that are our fishes hearing is phylogenetically later formed sensory organ of development so what i'm trying to say is inner ear was phylogenetically older external and middle ear was phylogenetically newer that's why the development of external and middle ear is very different from the development of inner ear that's what i am trying to convey with the pharyngeal arch anatomy and pharyngeal arch evolution and development so the development of external middle ear was later formed it was actually derived from mandibular arch the mandibular arch in the eve of development of human being contributed to the development of important muscles of hearing uh, sorry bones of hearing malleus and incus the second arch contributes to stapes these muscles of mastication muscles of facial expression arches were were originally doing that function only during evolution only it was actually modified to form hearing bones so that's why i am explaining pharyngeal arch evolution in this much detail so i'll write it down malleus and incus which actually developed from first arch was originally from quadrate and and articular bones in fishes okay that is the first arch the second arch will get uh, step is just again a bone for hearing develop which is also contributed by second arch it was originally meant for muscles of facial expression okay done so third fourth and sixth arch glossopharyngeal nerve superior laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve so the nose and it will forms it will it forms the larynx so if we study this in detail we are going to learn laryngology that is throat part if we understand first two arches detailly we are going to understand ear part that is otology in embryology of nose it is quite simple it actually develops from mesenchymal derivatives that is fronto nasal prominences so embryology of ear embryology of throat embryology of nose the insight to how these things operate and work i have dealt so if you got a better idea of this you also learn about the first pharyngeal cleft which forms the external artery canal this one i'll tell you in detail about while taking the class on first pharyngeal arch 
because a whole interesting story hide behind that then pouches first pharyngeal pouch forms extension tube second pharyngeal pouch tonsil third and fourth forms parathyroid third alone forms thymus then here comes the fact part so you should remember this as a fact because you are clear about the evolution embryology and anatomy of pharyngeal arches now you should remember the fact that the sea cells of the thyroid are formed from ultimo branchial body fine the ultimo branchial body so we'll see it as an mcq the para follicular sea cells of the thyroid are derived from second pharyngeal arch third pharyngeal pouch fourth pharyngeal cloud ultimo branchial body the answer is ultimo branchial body so if you are clear with your concepts you are can easily memorize the fact okay now mcq of the site in the pharyngeal arch where the ectodermal cleft meets the endodermal pouch is called so i have explained in detail about pharyngeal cleft in detail about pouch cervical sinus the 2 3 and 4 pharyngeal clefts will unit to form cervical sinus if it embryologically remnant is there means that is branchial body branchial cleft so dd for lateral neck swelling okay so the answer is pharyngeal membrane so ectodermal cleft and endodermal pouch will meet at pharyngeal membrane so that's all for today's class we'll meet in another class thank you